KPM. Oh no. Um, why did you say oh no, Kabil? No, I'm having too much of problems because of report writing, teacher. Ah, are you trying to write something? Yeah, but I'm very confused with the format of writing reports, actually. Hmm. So you you are not sure of the format of report writing? Exactly. Uh, by any chance, can you help me, teacher? Yeah, sure. Sure? You yes. can help me? Yes, obviously. Let's start. Yep. Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing really good today and today we are about to learn English subject especially for Form 4 students. So I believe all the Form 4 students are right in front of your television right now and we have teacher Marisa over here. Hi teacher. Hi Kabil. How are you? Doing good. Alright, uh, so today we are about to learn English subject mm -hmm. and just now we started with some report writing. Before we get into that, mm -hmm. I think right now all of us are still under this uh, COVID-19 stuff and all right. So we have to follow the SOP. We are already wearing our mask, so please yes. use the hand sanitizer teacher. Okay. Okay, cool. Let me use it as well. Okay, wherever you are, whatever you do, please use hand sanitizer. Uh, as much as you can actually and please do wash your hands uh, as much as you can as well and today teacher we started with the uh, report writing what mm -hmm. is it all about actually what are we going to learn today okay we are going to learn on mm -hmm. how to write up a report okay and we'll look at its format okay. and also the language features that's needed okay in, mm -hmm. in a very simple form what is a report actually a report is when we want to write something uh -huh. in order to tell other people of what we are planning to do Okay. of what happened to actually okay in a written mm -hmm. form sorry in a written form right? yes okay in a written so form. now uh before we just move into the subject i think we have to introduce the students for today mm -hmm. we have six students with us hello everybody yes hello hi I hello hope, yeah hello i hope all of you doing good so before we kick start with today's lesson I want you guys to introduce yourself, start with your name, your school and also mm -hmm. your hobby. Let's start with Noor Aliya. Hi Noor Aliya. Are you there? I believe Noor Aliya having some connection problem. Okay, never mind. We'll, we'll start it with... Hi everyone, yeah. this is Noor Aliya bin Aliya. Uh, currently in MRS. I'm currently studying at MRSM Sungai Besar, Selangor, mm -hmm. and my hobby is drawing during my free time. Oh, that's nice. Okay, next we go to Ayin Najiba. Hi, Ayin Najiba. Hello. Are you there? Hi, everyone. Hi. My name is Ayin Najiba binti Mazli. I am currently studying in MRSM Sungai Besar Selangor uh -huh. and my hobby is reading novels. Oh, reading novel. Okay. Fiction <laughs> or non-fiction? Oh, she's getting it later. Non-fiction. Non-fiction. Non cool. Okay. Mohamed Zakwan, can we hear it from you? Hi, everyone. Hi. My name is Mohamed Zakwan Haris Ben Nafizel. You can call me Zakwan. Uh -huh. Uh, and I'm currently studying in MRSM Sungai Besar Selangor. Uh, my hobby is I love to watch variety shows and movies during my free time. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next will be Mohamed Zal Afis. Hello, everyone. My name is Mohamed Zal Afis bin Abdul Rahman. Mm -hmm. I'm currently studying in MRSM Sungai Besar Selangor. Okay. My hobby is playing some video games during my leisure time. Oh, that's nice. And we do have friends all the way from Sarawak today, uh, which is Ismail Hakim. Can we hear it from you? 
Hello everybody, my name is Ismail Hakim bin Abdul Rahman uh -huh. and currently I'm studying at MSM Muka, Sarawak okay. and my hobby is to go swimming on my leisure time. That's nice. How is the situation in Sarawak right now, Ismail? Um, it, I think it's getting better. It's getting better. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Next we have uh, the Odora in the house. Hello. Hello everyone, my name is Theodora Dayang Tio. You can call me Tio. And I'm currently studying in Maktab Rendah Sains Muka, Sarawak. And right. my hobby is reading during my leisure time. Wow, that's really nice, Tio. Keep reading. And uh, yeah, we have six students today to join us. And uh, together with that, can we uh, please uh, repeat, uh, teacher, what is exactly the report means by? What's okay. the meaning of the report? Report is when we want to um, give suggestions uh -huh. and normally we give it to the higher ups. For example, for formal situations, okay. we have our headmaster if it's in a school situation. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, it's only for formal writing, is it? If it's yes. informal, can we still write reports? Um, normally we do it for formal situations. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. So today we are about to learn what is report and how report writing will be. But before mm -hmm. we kick start today's lesson, I think we should go for a short commercial break and come back and then we can start up the lesson teacher. Is it okay? Yeah, that's definitely okay. fine. Let's go for a short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned with us. KPM Didet TV KPM Welcome back students. We are about to learn uh, English subject, especially for uh, Form 4 students. And teacher Marisa already told us that we are going to learn about writing report. So I believe all of you already get started and all set to learn today's lesson. So teacher Marisa, can we start? Yeah, sure. One, two, three, go. Okay, so the topic of our lesson today would be writing a report. And this is lesson 105, and it's in unit 8 image. And um, for viewers at home, and also our students over in Google Meet, you can refer to the textbook, Full Blast Plus 4, page 122 and 123. Okay, so these are our learning standards for today. We've got the main skill of writing 4.2.4, where we use formal and informal registers appropriate to the target audience in most familiar situations, and the complementary skills speaking 2.1.1, where we explain simple content on familiar topics from what students read and hear. Okay, next we're going to go to the learning objectives. That's two. Okay. The first is we need to use the passive voice in report writing, and the second to write a report using the correct format. Okay, so now we are going to start and I'm going to ask our students questions. So wow. students... Okay, we're going to start it with questions before yes. studying. <laughs> okay, all right, let's start. Okay, so students, I need you to write your response on a piece of paper and uh -huh. once you're done, you just hold it up so everybody can see what you have written. Okay. okay? So the first question. Do the students at your school publish a school magazine? If yes, what is it like? If not, would you like your school to have one? Okay. Okay, so just indicate with a yes or no. And once you're ready, just hold it up. Now I understand why we have uh, all the school magazines over here, teacher. Yes. Okay, nice. Uh -huh. Yes, no, yes, yes. So we have uh, four yes and two no's. Yes. Okay. So uh, maybe we can get Ismail, if you would like to explain why you said that. Okay, yeah. sure. Okay, so my school have a magazine that okay. contains various activities that are organized throughout the year. It is also well prepared as the magazine also includes all the stuff in the school, the classes and even the alumni of the school. Ah, okay. Thank you, Ismail. That's from Muka. 
Okay, so now um, why don't we have Zakwan? If you'd like to yeah, uh, someone explain from further. Sungai Besar. Yes, Zakwan. Sure. Uh, so, uh, my school publish a school magazine annually. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in the magazine, it contains pictures of all of the students and teachers, uh -huh. and also students' projects like poem, essay, and short mm -hmm. story. Okay, nice. yep. So, that's one of the examples of the uh -huh. magazines there. Okay, yeah. Kay. Thank you, Zakwan. Okay. So, all these are from Sungai Besar? Um, two from Sungai Besar, one would be from Mara. Ah, okay, that's yep. nice. <laughs> okay. Okay, so for the second question, what features should a good school magazine have? So students, please prepare your answers. So features of magazines would be things like articles um, and then pictures, gallery okay. of, of pictures. All Maybe from students, right? Students yes. and can be by teachers as well. Yes. Okay. Could be both. Yeah, so we can hear it from the students. Are you guys ready? If yes, yes, I can see Ismail showing report of cultural activities of the school. Okay, I think it's better uh -huh. if they read it out, right? Okay, yeah. can we hear it from Noor Aliyah. What is your suggestion? Students Art Corner. Oh, that's nice. A Students Art Corner. Yeah, come on. Noor Aliyah. I chose. Uh -huh. uh, I chose Student Arts Corner. It's to um, other students to release their uh, creativity okay. in the uh -huh. magazine. Examples okay. like drawings or um, poetry, something like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because I think because Noor Alia loves to draw, right? So she yeah. wants something like that to be part of the yes. magazine. Okay, and uh, anyone else? Maybe we can have um, Zal. Izal. Zal Hafiz. Ah, Zal Hafiz. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I think a good school magazine should have an honorable mention section. This section consists of all achievements of the students throughout the year. This way, students will feel appreciated for what they have done for the school. Ah. Mm -hmm. That's nice. And it will also motivate other students mm -hmm. to be part of the magazine, right? If yes. they score well, they will be part of the magazine, right? Yes, so they would exactly. feel appreciated. Exactly, mm -hmm. yes. That's nice. Okay, thank you, students. Now we are going to move on to the next part of our lesson in which we are going to look at a report. Okay. And we're going to look at the format mm -hmm. and also the language features. No wonder you said you're going to help me with the format earlier. Yes, so okay. this is the part of the format. Okay. Okay, so your school publishes a monthly magazine, Shine in the Dark. The head teacher of your school has asked students to write a report on the magazine and suggest in what ways it can be improved. Okay, for this part, I'm going to ask questions again mm -hmm. to our students. So the first question, who are you writing the report for? Okay, maybe Ismail, you'd like to answer that one? Okay, sure, sure, miss. Uh -huh. Okay, so we are writing the report to the head teacher of SMK Green Road, Mr. Abang Othaman Masagus. That's amazing. Yeah. So yes. this is to whom you are writing the report for. Okay, the second question that we have, why are you writing it? So maybe, um, Theodora, would you like to explain this one? Yeah, sure. We are writing this report to recommend how to make the magazine better. Aha, uh -huh. recommending how to make it better because yep. you can see in the instructions, there's ways in, uh, we have to suggest ways in which it can be improved. Yes. And we've got the third question, what style should it be written in? Okay, so maybe we can get Alia to help us out with this. Come on, Alia. Sure. Uh, it should be written in formal writing style. Yeah, he needs Even to I be written. I was confused, like, what is it exactly? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. either formal or informal. Since ah. we are writing to our headmaster, it should be formal. Okay. Okay. So this is part of the format of the report. Uh -huh. To whom you're writing, from, and also the subject. Okay. So for the next one, 
Now read the report below and choose the appropriate heading for each paragraph. Ah. So for reports, we have headings for each of the paragraph. Okay. So when you know when somebody read the report, they could just straight away know what's going on. Okay. So it makes it easier. All right. Okay. So the heading will be the like the main point, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. okay for the first one, can we get um, any student? Yeah, Ain. Maybe we get Ain. Hi. Okay. What is the heading? Hi. Um, for the first one, uh, the heading is uh, introduction. Mm hmm. Okay. Let's see the answer. Mm -hmm. Yes, All it right. is the introduction. Why do you say so, Ain? It is because this paragraph uh -huh. start with this report focuses on. Okay, so the key word would be on this report focuses on. So what the report is going to be about. Okay. That's why it's the introduction. Always introduction will be the first paragraph, right? Yes. Okay. Correct. Okay, for the second one, maybe we can get Zakwan. Uh, sure, teacher. Uh -huh. uh, so the second one, uh, I think the suitable heading for the second paragraph uh, would be becoming digital. Let's see. Yes, becoming digital. Why do you say so, Zakwan? Uh, because that's the keyword, uh, which is an online version of the magazine. Ah, oh. so over in the second sentence, viewers, there's a mention, as a result, an online version of the magazine. So it matches with becoming digital. Okay. Okay, so Th for the third... That's a good point, actually. Yeah. Becoming digital. Okay. Nowadays, right? Yeah. Okay, now for the third one, maybe if we could get Zal to help us out? Yes. Sure, teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the heading for this paragraph should be new features. New features. Okay, why do you say so, Zal? Because there is a keyword in the paragraph which stated F more variety. Ah, so okay, over here we have the keyword should have more variety. So it means we are going to add something new to it. Okay, thank you, Zal. Let's have a look at the next one. Maybe we can get Theodora? Sure, teacher. For the fourth paragraph, I think the most suitable heading is student involvement. Okay, why do you say so? Because there is a keyword that is more students should be involved. Aha, uh -huh, let's have a look at the answer. Yes, correct. If you look at the text, there's the phrase, more students should be involved. Yes. Okay, good one, Theodora. And for the final one, maybe we can get Ismail to help us out. Ismail. Okay, sure, Miss. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the heading for the last paragraph is conclusion, and we can prove it by the keyword to sum up. Okay, so let's have a look. Perfect. Yes, it is conclusion. Yes. And yes, thank you, Ismail, for pointing out that the keyword would be to sum up, which means we wrap everything up. Yep. Okay. Okay, so finally, we have a full report. This is what a report looks like. Okay. So this is exactly how the report actually looks like. Yes. Okay. So it's quite simple. It's quite straightforward. Okay. And when you read it, you can just skim and scan the headings. So All you'll right. get the idea of the report. So you don't have any signatures, nothing? For this one, no. Oh, okay. Okay. So for the next one, we've looked at the format. Now we are going to look at the language features okay. of a report. As for um, the language feature, it is highly suggested we use the passive voice. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when we use passive voice, it emphasizes the action rather than who or what is responsible for it. And passive voice, we also present information in an impersonal, formal way. So it's more formal. Okay, so we have these two examples here. The first would be the active sentence. Contractors build 100,000 new homes in this country every year. So the focus of that sentence would be on who's doing the action. Okay. Which are the contractors. Yes. Okay. So looking at the passive sentence, more than 100,000 new homes are built in this country every year by contractors. So in the passive, the focus it would be on what happens. 
are built in this country. Yes. Okay. So you could see that the difference between active and passive would be on the focus of ah. the sentence. So here we are looking more into the content yes. when it comes to report. Yes. Okay. okay. And you guys can get this from KPM's portal Sumbaku. These notes are all here and it's explained really well. So do check it out. Okay. Okay, so now how do we form the passive voice? Okay, a passive voice, it's made up of, first we need to have a subject, which is the receiver of the action. You can see in this example that it's a back. And a verb to be was, the past participle of the main verb, which is bought, and then the agent by Anna. Okay, this may sound tricky. So let's have a look at these two over here. How do we convert the active voice to be the passive voice? First, the object of the active voice will now become the subject of the passive voice. Next, the verb stays in terms of position, but we need to add a suitable verb to be and also include the past participle form of the main verb. And finally, the subject of the active voice becomes the agent. Okay. Okay, so that's how we convert an active voice to a passive voice. So subject become agent, object become subject, and the yep. verb will add a verb. Hey, sorry. Yeah, verb will add that verb was bought. Yes. Okay. Uh, but we need to uh, be reminded that the agent, it's only included if it adds important info. If not, it's okay for us not to have the agent. So we can just have subject and verb. Yes, okay. because the focus is on the action itself. Cool. Okay, this one, you can also get the notes from KPM's Sumbaku and also in your textbook, page 165. Okay, now it's time to get our students to try some of this out. So we have the active sentence to start with, we must do something about the long commercial breaks. Okay, this is the active, where we have the subject we, the verb must do, the object something. Now, can we get Alia to help us out and to change the active to be the passive? Okay, Alia? Sure, teacher. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the subject is something, mm -hmm. the verb is must be done, mm -hmm. and the agent is by us. Okay, let's have a look. Mm. Okay, that's correct. You just shift it like what I've told you before. So now the passive sentence, could you just read it out, Alia? Okay. To start with, something must be done by us about the long commercial breaks. Okay, thank you. And as I've said before, the agent by us, if it's not that, it's just optional, the sentence would still be okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the next one, we have the active sentence, we will attract new viewers that way. Okay, so looking at this active sentence, we have the subject we, the verb will attract and the object would be new viewers. Okay, so maybe we can get Theodora to help us out. Sure, teacher. The subject would be more viewers. The verb would be will be attracted. Mm -hmm. And the agent will be by us. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, that's correct. You could just read out the, the new passive sentence. New viewers will be attracted by us that way. Okay, thank you. So, so here the by us is still option. Yes, it's still optional. Even okay. if we take it out, the sentence would still be grammatically correct. correct. And the meaning is still there. We understand the meaning. Okay. Okay, so that's the language aspect of um, report writing. Okay, so before we move on to the write-up, mm -hmm. I think we've got to go for a short commercial break. I think we have learned mm -hmm. way too much for the first session already. <laughs> <laughs> so students, please go get some, uh, some uh, drink or snacks. Uh, before that, please uh, talk to your students, talk to your friends about what we have learned for this mm -hmm. past 10 minutes. All right, so let's go for a short commercial break and we'll see you guys in another two more minutes. Bye.
TV KPM Didik TV KPM Alright, welcome back students. We are in the midst of learning how to write a proper report. Teacher Marisa is guiding us on that. Alright, thank you very much for that teacher first of all. And now we are about to get into write-up. Shall we start? Yes, sure. So now uh, we're going to go to the write-up. Okay, this is in page 123 of your textbook. So students at home and also in the Google Meet, you can refer to that page. Okay, for the write-up, Here's the instruction that we have. Your teacher has asked you to write a report about your classroom and suggest ways in which you could make it more pleasant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are three questions and these three questions act as a guide as to the content of what they are supposed to write. Okay. Okay, so for the first question, think about your classroom. What two or three features do you want to focus on? And the next one, what heading would you use for each of the features you have chosen? And for the third one, what specific suggestions do you have to make about each of these features? Okay. Okay, so students, while you are writing, please keep in mind these questions because this would be a proper guide for your content. Okay. And finally, I believe our students have written their work just now during the break. Okay, so before we look at their work, mm -hmm. I would like to explain about the suggested plan of how we write reports. First, we need to have a to, from and subject. And this is written at the top. Yeah. Okay. And then it's followed by introduction, where students can state what the report is about. And they can use phrases like the aim, this is a report on, or this report describes. After that, it is followed by the main part, which will consist about two till four paragraphs, mm -hmm. where students will give info and expand on the points that they want to make. And they could also make recommendations and suggestions. And finally, in the conclusion, this is where our students state their overall impression or opinion of the report. And they can use phrases like this, all in all, to sum up on the whole, in conclusion, in my opinion, and from my point of view. Okay, okay are we ready to take a look at their work? Yeah. Are okay. you guys ready? You name it, teacher. <laughs> Alia. Okay, ah. Alia. Okay, Alia, maybe you would like to read out what you have written? Sure, teacher. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Introduction. The purpose of this report is to focus on some aspects of our classroom which need to be improved in order to let the students learn in a more comfortable and pleasant environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Alia. So where's your heading, Alia? The introduction. All right. Okay, so On top this, of the paragraph. this would be the heading. Okay, oh. sorry about that. Never mind, I'll just indicate. Okay, no okay. problem. So this is the heading. Uh -huh. Okay, what about the passive? Did you use any, Alia? Yes, I did. Uh huh. The sentence is, which need to be improved, uh, which need to be improved. Okay. okay, so we have the passive in the third, uh, sorry, the third line, which need to be improved. Um, and could you please explain more on more comfortable and pleasant? What do you mean by that? What I mean by the uh, more comfortable and pleasant environment is giving a sense of enjoyment in the classroom. Uh -huh, a sense of enjoyment in the classroom. Okay. So if we, um, if we are to look at Alia's work, she included the heading. Okay. And then she went straight on to the purpose of the report, which is what an introduction should be. Okay. And then she used passive and then she explained. 
So I think this is a very well-developed paragraph. All right. And I think it deserves a 5 over 5. Congratulations, Alia. We are giving you 5 over 5. Yep. That's amazing. OK, so we're looking at the next one. Theodora. Theodora. If you could just read it out loud. Sure, teacher. Mm -hmm. Reading space. The majority of our students like reading. Productive activities such as reading and having some time out could be carried out in this space. Placing some books, tables, and some bin bags would make the space cozy. Okay, so which one's your heading, Theodora? Reading space. Okay, reading space. And did you use any passives? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. The phrase is could be carried out could be carried out okay so for viewers it's in the fourth line could yeah. be carried out okay um could you explain a little bit more on what do you mean by would make the space cozy yes teacher so here is reading is a calming activity therefore students will enjoy their time in the space and bean bags will allow them to sit comfortably Aha, uh -huh. being comfortable when you want to read. Yeah. And if you look at the illustration over on the right hand side, uh -huh. this is what a bean bag is. Yeah. So for uh, those who doesn't know what bean bags are, it's kind of like a little huge bag, but you can and it's soft and you can sit on it and be comfortable yes. and well you can relax. If by any chance bean bag like was kept in my school earlier, it means I think I wouldn't be reading it. I'll be sleeping on the bean Oh no, bag. Yeah, <laughs> we wouldn't want that's that. That's like very much comfortable. <laughs> it's too comfortable, yeah, yeah I would agree. <laughs> okay, so um, looking at Theodora's work, uh, she included headings, she included passives, mm -hmm. and then um, I think this one is a well-developed paragraph as well. Okay. So I think this deserves a 5 over 5 too. Congratulations, Theodora. You are getting 5 over 5 as well. Okay, okay so now we're having a look at Zakwan's work. Okay. So Zakwan, if you could just read out loud what you have written. Uh, sure, teacher. Uh, information board. Each class should have their own information board to make sure that all the important news can be delivered to the students. New information board are needed by us. Students, can they collect the board to make it more lively? Okay, thank you, Zakwan. So, which one is your heading, Zakwan? Uh, the information board. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this would be the heading. Okay, what about the passives? Did you use any? Yes, I did. There's two passive voice in this paragraph. Mm -hmm. The first one is the important news can be delivered to the students. Okay. Uh, okay. And the second one is new information board are needed by us the two passive yeah there are two passive sentences okay thank you zakwan so these would be the passives okay that's very good of you to attempt and do two okay um can you please ex explain a little bit more on what do you mean by decorating the board to make it more lively uh, okay, sure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the word lively means something that is full of energy. Uh -huh. So, what I mean from the sentence is, students can decorate the board and the board will look attractive and can get people's attention to read it. Okay, mm -hmm. I think I like that word attractive because, you know, for information board, I think it really needs to be attractive so people actually read the info. Yep. Okay, looking at Zakwan's work, he included the heading, he included passives, and he even included some suggestions over here. Mm -hmm. So this would be a suggestion. Okay. Okay, I think this is also a paragraph that's well developed. So a five over five for Zakwan. Good but job, Zakwan. We, we, we cannot add uh, one more point because he got two passives. Not possible, is it? Yeah, it is possible though. Possible, okay, yeah. so we can make it six over six. Oh, okay, sure, Can definitely. <laughs> we'll go with six over six. Okay, cool. <laughs> Congratulations, Zakwan. And yeah, next we have another. Okay. Ismail's answer. Okay, if you could just read it out loud, Ismail. All right, sure. Mm -hmm. So, Games Corner. As we are aware, games have many benefits for students, such as reducing stress, filling up our free time, and even to foster a closer relationship with one another while learning. 
-hmm. one's language mastery could be improved by playing board games. Okay, thank you, Ismail. So which one is your heading, Ismail? The heading for my paragraph is Games Corner. Okay, thank you. Did you use any passives? Yes, I did. The passive voice that I use is one's language mastery could be improved by playing board games. Okay, thank you. So one's language mastery could be improved by playing board games. Okay. Okay, um, I think I would like you to explain on the word to foster a closer right, relationship. Sure. Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, meaning of foster is to encourage or to develop something. And referring to my sentence, it means to develop a closer relationship among the students. Aha. Uh -huh. So you want to uh, encourage a closer relationship among the students. Yes, okay. Sure. What about language mastery? Okay. Language mastery means that you have learned or understood the language completely without having the difficulty while using it. Aha, uh -huh. ah. so you understand completely. So that's why you are called a master. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, but this looks like Ismail won his interest to be there in the classroom because earlier he mentioned that uh -huh. he loved playing games and all, right? Oh, so going to school, yeah. going to class itself is going to be give him so much of happiness <laughs> if Games Corner is going to be there. <laughs> yeah, so maybe we should have one in yeah. MRSA Muka. <laughs> Especially at Ismail's classroom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so looking at Ismail's work, there's uh -huh. the heading and then he used passives and then he even used good words over there and he even gave suggestions to play board games. Yeah. Okay, so I think this is also a very well de developed paragraph. Mm -hmm. So would it be a five or a six to you? Yeah, five, five, because he only gave two pa one passive. Oh, here, five. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so five more five once five again five. to his smile. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay. Let's so for the next one, Zal, if you could just read out your answer, Zal. Sure, teacher. Mm -hmm. Upgrading the projector. The current projectors in the classes are outdated. It can be proven by the low resolution of the videos being shown. Technology has advanced and having the latest gadgets is a must. I believe that a better projector can surely increase the quality of students' learning. Okay, thank you, Zal. So which one's your heading, Zal? Uh, the heading for the paragraph is upgrading the projector. Okay, good. Did you use any passives? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. There are two passives in the paragraph. Mm -hmm. The first one is, it can be proven by the low resolution. And okay. the second one is, technology has advanced. Aha. Uh -huh. So, thank you, Zal. So, you used two passives. Okay, there's a word that maybe I'd like you to explain. What do you mean by low resolution of the videos? Uh, low resolution means that the videos or screen being, sh being shown are not clear and hard to see by the student. Ah, it's not clear and it's hard to be seen. Okay, so over here, there's uh, an illustration of a projector. So normally we have this in class and we can get images. You know, you can connect it to a device and it will show us the images that we want or yeah. even movies. So okay. Charles is trying to tell that uh, we have to actually replace it with a proper one, current technology one, because if it's low resolution, students can't be learning a proper stuff over there, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it was a good one. Yeah, I think it's a good one. So oh. looking at his work, there's the heading as well, there's passives, uh -huh. and there's suggestions, and he used two passives. So, so it's six over six. Yes. <laughs> yes, Zal, you are getting six over six. Okay, so I think students Zal. have to come out with more passives so that they will <laughs> give more points. <laughs> okay, nice. Okay, so for the next one. Uh -huh. Eins. Ein. So read it out loud, Ein. Of course, conclusion. To sum up, I believe that if the above recommendations are carried out, our classroom for sejahtera will be more pleasant and conducive. Yeah. Uh, if you could just repeat the uh, the last final sentence phrases, Ain, starting with for uh -huh. sejahtera. For sejahtera will be more pleasant and conducive to study in. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ain. So, which one's your heading, Ain? 
the heading is conclusion. Okay, so that's the heading. Did you use passives? Yes. Mm -hmm. The sentence starts with, uh, if the above recommendations are carried out. Okay, if the recommendations are carried out, so this is the passive. And can you please explain what do you mean by the phrase more pleasant and conducive to study in? Sure. This sentence, uh, meaning of the sentence are the classroom will be more attractive, mm -hmm. enjoyable and also helping the students to do learning with the great environment in the classroom. Uh -huh. So I like the way that she used the word enjoyable because when we want to learn, we need to enjoy too. Yep. Okay, so looking at Ayn's work, ah, yeah, one more. I also like that she used the word to sum up because this is a suggested phrase for conclusions. Okay. It shows that we are coming to an end. Yes. Okay, so looking at Ayn's work, there's the heading, there's the passive, and then she gave her opinion uh -huh. that this is what she feels because there's also the keyword, I believe that, to indicate her opinion. Okay, okay. so this one. So, Ayn, I think this is a good job too from you. So, I think, is it a five or a six? Yeah, five, five, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm the one giving the yeah. points. <laughs> because I think you are an expert too. Oh, no. wow. <laughs> okay, so yeah, five over five. Uh, Ayn, congratulations. Uh -huh. Yes. So, I, I think agree. the whole report is completed now, right? Yes. So, now, this is what uh. the whole report looks like. So, if you... We just have a look once again. Uh -huh. First, we need to start with to whom we are writing it to. Yep. And then who is writing. And then the subject would be what our report is going to be about. Mm -hmm. And then um, we also have headings. There are six of them. First would be introduction, second information board, third upgrading the projector, four games corner, five reading space, and finally the conclusion. And if you have a look, uh, you might have noticed that four report it's quite simple, short, and succinct. Yeah. So everything is there. So when someone reads a report, they could just read the heading. Oh, so this is what the report is about. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, the essay that our students done collaboratively. Yes, and it's perfect. This is exactly how an article should be, right? Exactly, yeah. a report. So yep. Yeah, so uh, definitely we're going to say that it's it's a good uh, report writing mm -hmm. uh, with the guidance of teacher Marisa. But before that, before we continue today's lesson, I think we should go for a short commercial break, mm -hmm. teacher. So we'll see you guys after a short commercial break. Stay tuned. Welcome back students, so we are already approaching the last part of today's lesson and we have teacher Marisa together with us, she taught us how to write a proper report. So now it's time to check the students whether they have learned properly or not. Shall we teacher? Yeah, we should. Okay, so um, before I gave the recap of the whole lesson, we're going to invite a few students to share with us what they have learned. Okay. Okay, so maybe we'll get three of you. Okay. To just tell us what you have learned. Yeah, so I think I, I'm going to pick the three students. Yeah, sure. So if I tell out the name, you should actually tell us what mm -hmm. you exactly learned for the past one hour. Yes. Okay? So can we start it with uh, Ismail Hakim? Okay, sure. Um, so I've learned that we have to use the passive voice mm -hmm. when writing a report as we are writing formally to a company or an organization. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was a good one, right, teacher? Yes. Okay, we can give him another five or five points then. Oh, Is yes. Is it okay? I think he got a six before. Uh, now, now. A oh, new now, one. now. Yeah. Okay, sure. So a five, five or five. Over five. And next, maybe we can hear it from uh, Theodora. Theo. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Uh, so today, I've learned how to convert active voice uh -huh. into mm -hmm. passive voice. Okay. Mm -hmm. So can, can you explain more about it, how exactly it works? 
so the active voice, uh -huh. the arrangement of the words will be different from the passive voice. It's like we will attract mm -hmm. new viewers, just like the example just now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when we when we change it into passive voice, okay. the the object from the active voice will be the subject for the passive voice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it will be. That was a good one with examples. Yes. Yeah. So Perfect. five over five again to you, Theodora. And next, can we hear it from uh, Mohammad Zakwan? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Yeah. So today I learn about uh, passive voice, which is quite new to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and also learn about how to write the report uh -huh. in a good way with okay. the right format. That's mm -hmm. nice. Uh, maybe we can we can have another one more student, maybe teacher. Oh uh, yeah, sure. Uh, maybe we can hear it from Nuralia. Uh huh. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Today, um, I've learned how to write a report in the mm -hmm. correct order, and its features. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Okay. So I think uh, the students over here they actually learned what exactly mm -hmm. uh, you thought today about report writing. Can we ha have the okay. summary for today's lesson teacher. Okay, the summary for today's lesson would be for the first part, we've looked at the features of a report. Okay. So that would be the format. You must remember that you must write to, from and subject. Okay. And then after that, one unique feature of a report would be you would have headings for each of the paragraph. Okay, afterwards, we looked at the language feature of a report in which it's highly suggested that we use the passive voice okay, because it makes the sound more formal and we would shift the focus more towards the action. Okay, and finally, we, uh, we get our students to write a report and they've managed to do so beautifully. Yeah. Okay. Nice. But uh, at the moment, I mm -hmm. do have a few questions to you, teacher. Like, yeah, sure. Do we uh, write a report for all kind of events? Okay, I would highly say, I would say that uh, it depends. Okay. Let's say if it's just a small event which is handled quite easily, maybe not. But let's say if it's a school-wide event and it's okay. going to be done every year. So when we write a report, there's a proper documentation for it. So in the next year, people will look on it. They can reflect on what, is, what should be done to make it better, perhaps. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. Like for example, the the class that we saw just now, how to mm -hmm. better the betterment to mm -hmm. make the class. They don't have to repeat the exact suggestion the next year, right? Yes, they yeah. can think of new ones. Maybe exactly. the ones that's outlined, it's been done. Okay, so we know we not to repeat what we have done before. Mm. So that's one of the functions of report too. That's nice. But mm -hmm. when it comes to report writing, what are the common mistakes that the students always do? Uh huh. One thing I think. Um, would be the format. There's uh -huh. lots of format actually. Okay. 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 Sometimes you would see that there's signature. Sometimes there's no signature, but it depends. Mm -hmm. And I think the the one that we have done that's the most commonly used. Okay. Okay. That's one format. Number two, I think students tend to um, sometimes they use less passive voice. So when you we use active, it's not wrong grammatically. But in terms of style, it didn't really fit. Ah, so okay. it will it will sound your report will sound more informal that ah, way, okay, okay. as if you are not serious in writing it. Uh huh. So that is the main mistakes that always students repeat. Okay. Yes. If just in case students would like to go back home, mm -hmm. the students, okay, they are already home. A <laughs> uh, few students, like they want to actually learn back or they want to see all this uh, contents mm -hmm. where they can actually refer to teacher. Okay, they can actually refer to KPM's Sumbaku portal. Some of the notes I've used are from there as well. Okay. And they also provided us with sufficient exercises for that. And of course, full plus plus four, that would be your textbook. All right, uh -huh. that's amazing. So thank you very much, uh, Teacher Marisa, for joining us today. Mm -hmm. And you taught us exactly pinpoint, like very, very detailed way to mm -hmm. actually write a report. I believe all the students over here and also students who are watching from home mm -hmm. uh, really know what, how to actually write the report today. Yes. Right, thank you very much. Thanks Welcome. you very much for joining today. Okay. All right, so students at home and also the six students at the back, I believe you guys have learned how to write a mm -hmm. proper report today. So I'll see you guys in some other show. Please take care and stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. School.
Sometimes it feels confined. Sometimes it feels like playground, a place full of lessons, so no heart would be let down. Thought it would be dull and boring, but it's not, I have to admit. Can't lie though, it's still tiring. In the end, I promise it is worth it. School is something we must all embrace. Knowledge we need to seek out and chase. Education certainly begins with a positive attitude. For this opportunity, let's show some gratitude. To get the most from school, we should consistently attend. Around each corner, there's always a friend. Together we strive to learn, and end we will see how much hard work we put, flying colors will achieve. Good memories we've created, the sadness and happiness throughout the show. It's time to bid farewell, may we be blessed forevermore. Our class right now has ended. I hope you had lots of fun and count me as a friend. Dedek TV KPM